Hello, everybody. Welcome to TSAM Digital. My name is Anam Khan. I'm the head of content here at Box on Media. And joined my, by me today, I've got Nicola Ashkin. Um, she's the data governance coach. Hello, Nicola. Thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for inviting me, Anam. I'm really flattered to be here. I'm, I'm glad. Um, Nicola, just to kick things off, it will be brilliant if we can have a brief introduction about yourself. Yeah, of course. So um, as you said, my name is Nicola Askham. I'm known as the Data Governance Coach. And um, for the last few years, I've made it my mission to help as many people as possible be successful with data governance. Um, I've been doing data governance nearly 18 years now, which is scary. And I think when I started, I, I found it a very vulnerable place to be. And you know, it's a challenging thing to do. And I, I've made every mistake in the book. And but I didn't have anybody else to go and talk to, or there was nobody running training courses or anything. So um, I've made it my mission to try and, you know, make it easy for people to find others to talk to and network and get support when they're doing data governance. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Nicola and I will be talking about data governance and Nicola has uh, posted on LinkedIn a while ago about uh, a few questions that our audience might have around data governance and some of the questions I'll be asking her today. So just to kick things off and jump right into it. The first question that I have, it's lots, lots of people get confused about the term data governance, data management and data quality. Um, can you please clarify the difference between all of these terms? Yeah, I think I think it was a really good question, Anna, because you know people do find it is really really confusing, and I think one of the reasons people get confused is uh, if you've heard of DAMA, which is D A M A, which is the Data Management Association, and there there well there's DAMA I, which is the umbrella global organization, and then there's chapters in local countries all around the world, and they have a, a data management body of knowledge, and they actually publish what they call the DAMA Wheel. And um, I love it because it has data governance right in the center. And then it has all the other data management disciplines around the outside. Um, so I, I know that the data governance is in the middle is because it's the foundation for everything else. But it causes a lot of confusion. A lot of people say, oh, well, if Dharma put data governance in the middle of the data management wheel, it means that data governance and data management are the same thing and mm -hmm. the, the terms are interchangeable. And I, people get so confused. So I was actually glad when somebody asked this question. So it gives me the chance to try and explain. So data management is the term, I would call that the umbrella term. Data management is everything you do to proactively manage your data. And that includes everything from improving its quality, doing data governance, doing data protection and meeting GDPR requirements and data security and data modeling. There's, there's so many different things and you have different experts to do all of them. Um, so data management is very much the umbrella term. So if anybody says we're doing data management, I would normally go, yes, but which part? <laughs> you know, there are many things you can do to manage your data, but which part are you doing? So I said before, you know, data governance is um, at the center of the wheel and it is there because it provides this foundation. So data governance is all about providing that framework of roles and responsibilities so that you get the right people making decisions about data and, and making, you know, consistent decisions. So data governance is sometimes, um, you know, viewed as the boring bit. I don't think it's boring, but it's, it's, a, it's a critical foundation, but it's not the sexy stuff. It's not the amazing analytics and the things that you can do with your data. But if you don't understand what your data is, where it is, is and whether it's good enough to use, it doesn't matter how much you've invested in expensive tools to analyze the data, you'll still get the wrong answers. So data governance gives you a foundation for everything. Um, and data quality is, is it's actually one of the easiest data management disciplines to describe because it's more or less what it says. Um, it's, is that data good enough to use? And of all of the disciplines, the other data management disciplines, it's the one that data governance is the most closely aligned to. Because to be fair, it's normally the first reason people put data governance in and then they only align it afterwards to their other disciplines and try and get more benefits from doing that. But data governance is, is absolutely vital if you want to do sustainable data quality. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, brilliant. So the next question that was posed to us was, what are the first action you would take when starting a new data governance initiative? Uh, I think this is a good question, because I think there are so many possible things you could do that people dive in and just want to do everything. Um, I actually think the first thing people are often surprised is don't dive in and get on with doing things is actually work out why you're doing data governance. I think particularly in the financial services world, um, there's been lots of focus from regulators and things. So, you know, you might come to work one day and some your boss says, you go, oh, Anam, um, we need to do data governance. You can go and lead that. And, you know, you've got no idea what it is. And, yeah. and people just go, right, okay, well, I'll Google it and I'll work out and I'll dive in and start doing it. But the trouble is that data governance is... Um, 
more about the people and less about the data, particularly in the early days. And we've got to bring these people with us and get them thinking about their data and, and worrying about it. And they're only going to do that if we can explain to them why we should be doing data governance. And so many people miss that first step. Um, so I would encourage anybody that's just starting out to take the time to work out what are the drivers for your organization doing data governance. Go and look at your corporate strategy. And if it's to, you know, enter certain markets, leave certain markets, you know, perhaps reduce costs, um, you know, whatever. Work out, is your data good enough for your organization to meet that part of their strategy? Because then you've got a really good story. You can start working out why you should be doing data governance. And once you know that, then you can focus on what you need to do first. Because I think otherwise people tend to dive in and either try and do too many things at once, or they focus on these quick wins, something that would be really quick and easy to do, but it might be the wrong data. And people just, you know, perhaps nobody's overly interested in it. And you need to be focusing on the right things to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Brilliant. And talking about data governance initiative, we cannot ignore the fact that we're living in these uncertain times, uh, COVID-19 hitting the industry really hard. How has that impacted the data governance initiative in your opinion? Mm, it's been a yeah, it's been a bit of a roller coaster year for data governance as much as it has been for all of us generally. Um, I, I would say from what I've seen and from my clients and the, and the people I talk to is that uh, you know beginning of this year or early this year, a lot of data governance initiatives were put on hold. Mm -hmm. you know, there was this chaos of lockdowns and people working from home and trying to get their heads around that. And I think quite a lot of organisations felt that perhaps data governance wasn't key and vital at that time. Um, I would disagree, but, you know, and I, I had clients who, you know, were literally told, you know, the data governance team need to do, stop doing data governance and help out on a COVID-19 project. Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard that multiple times. So I know that there was almost like, there was like this pause, people took their foot off the gas in terms of doing data governance. But what I found is really, really interesting is that um, by mid to late summer, loads of people were getting in contact saying um, we've been told we have to ramp up data governance because mm -hmm. they've realized that the fallout from from what's gone on this year means that you've got to make some pretty tough decisions about your business in order to survive um, and to do that you, you're going to be looking at the data on your company and you've got some really senior people worrying now is the data good enough to make those kind of decisions will we make the right decisions um, so suddenly we've gone from all slow down to everything almost seems to be, we need to fast forward, we need to do this as quickly as possible. So it's, yeah, it's been a real roller coaster. And I'm, you know, I wish people had realized that it wasn't the best thing to do to take your foot off the gas earlier in the year, but I'm, I'm really relieved that, you know, these organizations are realizing it because, you know, I, I don't want companies to fail just because they made the wrong decisions. You know, that's such a, an annoying thing to do. If it was circumstances beyond their control, fair enough, but they can control the quality of their data and have some confidence when they're making decisions on it. No, definitely, definitely. Especially when the industry is becoming more and more data centric, they should not um, they should not compromise on the data quality and data governance initiatives. No, absolutely not. Brilliant. And um, the other question was, what should be the scope of data governance initiative be? Should it be the entire company data? Uh, where should one start? So um, whenever I'm answering questions on data governance, I always try really hard to say it. It's hard to say not not things like it depends, but because it's a it's a bit like a how long is a piece of string question when you have those kind of questions. So I would say um, you you probably don't want everything in scope to begin with, um, and even if you were aiming to have it eventually in scope, you've got to think about implementing data governance in incremental phases. You want to do this in small chunks that are doable, manageable for your organization and to prove the worth of data governance. And then you can move on to the next thing. And I would also say, I, I don't think that it is valuable to do the same level of data governance over all data. Because if you think about the data an organization has, some of the data about, you know, perhaps the assets under management is absolutely critical and vital. And if we don't manage that, we're going to make the wrong decisions. We're going to make losses, we, you know, perhaps damage our reputation. There's other data that we have that's just for context. And, you know, clearly we don't need to put the same level of control in over the latter 
kind of set of data than we do the first. So I think it's always really important. And this probably comes back to your earlier question about what do you do first? It's not what you do first, but pretty soon afterwards is to work out which is the most important data to your organization yeah. and put data governance over that first and at a higher level. And then you can just ra- gradually roll it out. So I would say ultimately, yes, aim to have all data under governance, but that doesn't mean that everything has the same level of control over it. And it could probably be many years before you get there. So focus on the most critical data to your organization first would be my advice. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. And what are the biggest mistakes that people generally make uh, when it comes to data governance? Ah, well, this, uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's a whole myriad of them. I actually, I've got a report on my website that says the top data governance mistakes and how to avoid them. And there's nine in that report. Wow. Um, so knowing you were going to ask this question, I'm thinking, oh, how do I pick just one? And actually what, what I actually came to conclusion was actually, I will tell you one that actually isn't listed in the report because it's actually the root cause of three or four of them in, in the report they write. And I think it's this lack of engagement with the business and the business users. So people seem to think um, that you can do data governance without talking to anybody. So you can just say, right, I'm going to do data governance. I'm going to go on a course or read a book or Google it. And I'm going to know what to do. And I can then just sit in the dark room, particularly easy these days when we work at home and and write my data governance framework. And then that's it kind of thing. And and that really, really doesn't work because as I've already said, you know, we, we, we're not doing this to people. We want to bring people with us and get them engaged and understand that data is really, really vital. I mean, in in, in the asset management industry, their only product is data. Yeah. Uh, and people need to get their head around that. And, they, and, you know, if you're talking to somebody, you don't want to say, I'm an asset manager. You want them to say, you know, actually, I understand that data is really vital and important to my job. And I need good quality data to do my job properly. So if you don't engage with the business users, how are they ever going to get that understanding? They don't just suddenly get it intrinsically because you sent out a you know, hundred page policy document or something. So biz, uh, you know, engagement with your business users at all stages is absolutely vital. And I think that is the biggest mistake I see people make. They think that they've worked out what data governance is and they probably have to be fair, but they don't take the time to communicate it and engage it and, and make people really understand why it's important and what's in it for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I completely uh, agree with you. This is a topic that has been um, talked about at most of our events. How do you get the wider organization get involved in the data governance projects and data governance initiatives? And that is where the biggest mistake lies, where people at the top level, they make a decision and it's not communicated properly or trained. The staff, lower staff is not trained properly with that. Um, so yeah, definitely, it's it's one of the biggest mistakes as you as you mentioned. Mm. Um, and we're we're closer to the wrap up of of this interview. Um, what would be the to wrap things up? What would be the three things you would like people to be aware of and be mindful of while considering their data governance initiative? I think yeah, it's probably reiterating some of the things I've said. I think. Um, first off, always start with why. Why are you doing data governance? Not just because your boss said so or your CEO said so, but you know what's in it for your organization. I think that's really, really important. Um, and I, I think you you need to think about the fact that um, you are not um, doing this to people. So you're helping them to do data governance, I think is a it's a it's a subtle mind shift, but it's a really, really important one. And then I think the third thing is definitely don't think you need to do it all at once. I think it's a bad thing to do it all at once. So definitely think about doing this iteratively and starting small and just gradually proving the benefit one bit and then getting bigger and better and rolling out across your company. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Nicola, for this lovely conversation. Hopefully, um, Nicola and I, we've we've shed light on some of the main concerns around data governance. Um, and if you want to get in touch, please do. Uh, I'll share the details for Nicola um, at the end of the video. Please do get in touch. Thank you for joining. Thanks, Anna.